right, good afternoon. Thanks for being here. My name is Mary Sheehan. I am the very proud CEO here at Joliet Area Community Hospice. And thank you for being here for our kickoff to Remembering from the Heart, our capital campaign to uh, enhance and build onto our hospice unit. We're very happy to be here. Um, the first group of people, we have many thanks to make today, but the first group is to my board of directors. If we could give them a little round. There's many. There are many here seated. Um, without their support, uh, none of this would be possible, and um, I'm just so grateful for all of them, for all they have done for, to make this happen. Um, we, this started, you know, back about a year and a half ago, um, just as a, a thought to kind of update the hospice home. And if you've been over there, you know, the, we need new carpeting, new wall coverings, those kind of things. Um, and then, you, you know, you kind of get the creative juices flowing. And we knew that our hospice unit was full many, many days with a waiting list for patients to come in. So one day last year at our annual dinner, I happened to ask Natalie Manley about adding more beds to this hospice unit. And she said, oh, that's a great idea. The next day, I got a call from her staff <laughs> who were introducing something to the rules committee. And it got approved through all the uh, departments of the government and signed by Governor Rauner in no time flat. So we are able to increase our beds to 20 and we're also inc changing the, the space a little bit. Um, so what I'm gonna ask you to do is I want you guys to close your eyes for a minute. And I want you to think of someone who has died in your family. And I wanna compare and contrast two experiences that I can share for myself is somebody who dies in the hospital. When you think about that, when I think about that, I think about the noise, the difficult parking, the smell of bad food, the clickety clack of carts and blood pressure cuffs and people being woken up in the middle of the night to, to do God knows what. Um, and just having a roommate, well, not these days, but <laughs> in the whole days you had a roommate and their privacy wasn't there. You had no place to be as a family. And so the memories of that person dying, um, I think, are not as wonderful as they could be. So to contrast to our hospice unit, which is quiet, private rooms, easy parking, uh, a full staff, including chaplains and social workers and aides, we have the smell of good food. The only clickety-clack here is the wine cart going down in the evening time to offer wine and snacks. And patients being comfortable, being able to sleep all night long without interruption. So it's a different feeling. And when I think about the people who have died in my life, I remember those things. We were talking about our, you can open your eyes now, I'm sorry. <laughs> we were talking about our kitchen, we were planning the kitchen. And you know, food is a big thing in this culture, in this world, and I, when I think about people dying, I think about, gee, what was the cafeteria like, you know, in that hospital? And um, what, what, what did we do? Where do you go as a family when we wanted to, you know, confer and cry? And, and here, it's a whole different thing. So we want to enhance that experience for people. I want when you walk in the front door to feel peace and healing and love from this amazing staff. I want you to take the stress of your shoulders and be able to say, ah, someone's taking care of my mom now. I can rest. So we're trying to create that feeling and enhance that feeling, and we're very excited about that. Um, we hoped, well, we started, let me tell you, we started with a um, feasibility study. We engaged some consultants who met with many, many people in our community, many who built it originally, this hospice unit, our Dwayne Krieger is in the back here who, who was the CEO at the time and responsible for this amazing building. Um, and and we, the results were po very positive. People felt like we could really raise money pretty easily. So we were very excited about that. So the board decided we're going to jump in. <laughs> we had support of our board, <clears throat> excuse me, our Ladies Guild, 
and we picked the best co-chairs ever for our capital campaign, who you'll meet in a minute, Tom, Terry, and Mike. Um, so thank you for all of your work. Um, we're hoping to great break ground April 24th, so mark the date, um, and we're going to add ten. We're going to add actually ten rooms because we're thinking about the future, and we need 20 beds now. But I bet you in five years we'll need 24, so we'll be ready. We're adding a family room chat. You'll hear more about that later. Um, but I would like to now introduce our Tom Vanna, who is our vice chair of our board, and also one of the members of the campaign steering committee. Thank you. Thank you, Mary. <laughs> well, I'd like to go ahead and thank you all for being here today and, and sharing in our excitement and our celebration of the public portion of our capital campaign for the, for the hospice home. We all are very excited. As Mary said, it became a vision when I first got on the board with our chair at the time, Carolyn, and, and um, we, uh, we hired Mary and we began to talk about, you know, what, what was gonna be the future for Joliet Area Hospice and we really felt very strongly about this project going forward and caring for our community. But one of the portions that I've been asked to talk a little bit about today was how can we all, or how can you all, help us with this capital campaign? How can we give, okay? So to talk a little bit about that, um, there are a number of different ways that gifts can be given. And it doesn't just mean money, um, although that's the important part. It could be stocks, it could be bequests. Any form of giving is, is greatly appreciated towards this capital campaign. One of the most important things when we started putting our steering committee together, um, there were a lot of discussion and concerns about you know, well, you know, we, we don't, we're not a million dollar giver, and, and we understand that, and there's very few people that are able to give at that level. And the most important gifts that we receive are any gift, and, and that could be $5, that could be $10. Um, it's all very important to the overall cause here for our hospice home. So please, don't feel as though if I, you can't give a thousand or a hundred thousand or whatever that is, um, that it's not important. Every gift here is just as important, whether small or large. So please, please feel free to get a hold of us and, and to contribute in some way. However, if you are able to give at a higher level, <laughs> we're certainly welcome to, uh, are certainly appreciative of that and we'll welcome those gifts. Um, we do have a number of naming opportunities, and I know Jackie will be giving you some literature to, to understand what those are. Some of those naming opportunities begin in the $5,000 range and can go up, obviously, to, to seven figures. So um, all types of naming opportunities, rooms, um, and, and such. So one of the other concerns is, is that when, when the hospice home was originally built, there was discussion of what would happen to the donors that, that gave at that level at that time and those naming opportunities. And please understand all of the naming opportunities that were originally given will remain. These all, the new naming opportunities will be for the capital campaign or for the, the refurbishment and remodeling of all of the existing spaces. So all gifts will go ahead and remain acknowledged. So with that, um, I'd like to take that. That's kind of my portion about the, the gift giving process. We'll get, again, we'd appreciate anything that you can do, and, and I appreciate you all being here today. And so at this time, I'd like to introduce Terry Darcy, my co-chair, and I don't believe he needs any further introduction. <laughs> Good afternoon. You know, I've heard it said that there are three very important days in our lives, the day we're born, the day we figure out why we were born, and some of us may never get that answer, and the day we transition. And this place is such a godsend to so many families and so many people. You know, this building was built, this, this dream started in 1983. This building was erected and opened in 2004. And the need has just grown so dramatically from there. And it's not just here. I, I've, I've experienced so many things in home, people getting help, and not just coming to this facility. Um, and this, does, this, this is called the Joliet Area Community Hospice, but this is a regional hospice. There's people from DuPage and Kendall and Will and counties around us and, and communities around us. So this is such a great place for so many folks. I've had some situations where um, I've experienced the love and the care that, that comes through here. 
And it's not just terminally ill, it can be, uh, you know, respite care. I've got a couple situations where a good friend was stricken with a uh, brain aneurysm. He was in a hospital for a month, and his wife, and he had bought a house in Arizona. They sold their house, they were living in their mother-in-law's house, and they had to leave the hospital after a month. He was in a coma. So in between finding a new place to live in this area, uh, they found that they could bring him here to hospice, and, and hospice took care of him in between the hospital and the home they were gonna develop to keep him going. Another situation, a friend of mine um, retired and within six months had a severe stroke, was completely disabled. He was 210 pounds, his wife was 115 pounds. She took care of him for several months and, and just ran down and they had grandkids out of state. She, uh, she finally realized and someone told her that, that he could come here and she could spend some time with her family out of state. So she brought him here and he stayed here for five days while she was able to go visit her family, came back and got him. It, that is what this is all about. It's not just coming here for the terminally ill, it's, it's, it's many other opportunities. So we really are blessed to have such a wonderful organization in our community. And you know, um, it wouldn't be possible to run this without the staff and the volunteers, so I'd like to applaud the staff and the volunteers of this organization. Thank you. At this time, I'd also like to ask uh, all the members of the steering committee to raise their hands and thank you all for your efforts on helping to raise the funds and the investments we need to get this going. Thank you very much. You know, typically I like to fly under the radar and my mom's not here today, um, but our family has uh, decided to invest $200,000 in this great opportunity for our community. And I just wanted to share that with everybody, not to challenge anybody, but to say <laughs> that's how much we believe in this. So with that, I'd like to introduce another co-chair, Mike Ridoff, and thank you all. Thanks, Terry and, and Tom for all your hard work on, on the campaign. Um, I think we're going to share some of the plans for the, the expansion of the hospice home, but the expansion and renovation of the hospice home will provide a warm, open environment for patients and families by providing a state-of-the-art facility that will allow the dying person to live peacefully, in comfort, and with dignity to the last moment of life. A lot of the um, thought that went into the expansion not only deals with the, the patient or the, the loved one, but the families of, of those individuals. And um, the new and upgraded family amenities will allow both the patient and their family to maximize the remaining time they have together in a home-like setting. These amenities will provide the ability to focus on end-of-life matters that are important to each individual family while ensuring hospice home staff provides the excellent and compassionate care that has been the hallmark of the Joliet Area Community Hospice for over 35 years. I've had several friends that have um, either had loved ones or, or <clears throat> friends of their friends that have ended up at the hospice home. And there's no one that I know of that has ever had anything bad to say about hospice. Um, we have several community leaders in the room here, and I know many organizations we're involved in. There's a lot of hard work, but there's always somebody to criticize something, which is human nature. But there's no one that I know of that has ever said anything negative about the great work we do at, at hospice. And I have personally experienced the excellent and compassionate care of Joliet Area Community Hospice um, when my dad was cared for at uh, Park Point Healthcare and Rehabilitation Center in Morris. Dad was under hospice care for a little over four months before he passed. Joliet Area Community Hospice not only cared for dad, but provided social and spiritual support to me and my family during this difficult time. This support allowed me and my family to spend and value the remaining time we had with dad, while also understanding the end of life process dad was going through. And for that, I will be ever thankful to Joliet Community Hospice. Um, I'd like to recognize a few people that some are here, some aren't, and those are um, 
Mary mentioned Natalie, or State Rep Natalie Manley, who took the charge to get legislation changed in lightning time. Um, believe it or not, Springfield can work when it needs to, right, Natalie? Um, and uh, was able to um, change legislation because prior to that, we were limited to 16 beds at the facility. And with the new legislation, we can now go to 20. She um, sponsored it on the House side, and in the Senate was our friend, Senator Jennifer Bertino Tarrant. Um, and they, like I said, in lightning time, got the legislation approved, and former Governor Edgar signed it. Edgar, holy cow. Wow. Governor, wow. <laughs> former Governor <laughs> Rauner signed it. OK. <laughs> um, but, but we thought something that would take a long time didn't. And so luckily, we weren't far enough in the process where we were able to go back and, and change it to reflect the new, newly enacted legislation. So with that, we're very honored to have State Representative Natalie Manley with us today. And I think Natalie's going to say a few words. So thank you very much. You don't ever want to prepare remarks when you're asked to talk about your own personal experience. But as I stood there, I started to get choked up. Um, so my mom came to Joliet Area Community Hospice on July the 4th, 2017. And she left this world, went to heaven on July 10th. And the most important thing that I can tell you is she got wonderful, compassionate care here. It's a terrible time for, you know, my mom uh, was a single mom for almost as far back as I can remember. And she's always been like our rock. And so when you know that things are changing like that, you want her to have the best care possible. You didn't want her to suffer. And she was suffering greatly. But the best thing they did for my mother while she was here, is not only did the staff take care of my mom, but you took care of my mother's children. She would have loved that. My mom was a nurse, so she was a caregiver herself. Um, so you, you gave her what she needed to live the last days of her life in dignity, but you took care of the most important thing for her, and that was her kids. And so I want you to remember that. You know, they talk about this legislation. I was doing my job, right? It was a great, um, it, it was something we had to do quickly. And I think, you know, I am my mother's daughter. <laughs> so it was going to happen. And it was going to happen so that we could do this the right way. And um, so I, I want to thank you for that. But you that work at hospice, you that care about the people that come through those doors, um, that's the real miracle work. Joliet Area Community Hospice doesn't turn anybody away as long as they have capacity. You know, it's not, it's not uh, you don't have to meet certain criteria for cost. I don't think a lot of people realize that. That everyone is welcome here if they have the room. And oftentimes there's a waiting list to get people into the home here. Um, so I, didn't, I wanted other people to be able to have the same experience that my family had. And so I was, it was my honor to do what I could do to make that a possibility. And um, I just want to thank you all for doing the important work. And that's taking care of everybody that we love. So I appreciate that very much. Mary, thank you. Thank you all for your wonderful comments. Um, all right, so now we're going to um, talk a little bit more specifically about our gifts and also the, um, what the new hospice unit will look like. We have some drawings, and we encourage you to stick around afterwards. We'll give you a tour and show you our drawings. Um, the highlights are that we're adding um, a chapel-like space, large space, stained glass window, Overlooking the lake. I know it's not a lake, but I call it a lake. Um, for spiritual space for patients and for families. 
Uh, we're adding a family kitchen so families can cook together um, and have a meal with their loved one uh, before they die. We're adding, um, we're taking away the big clunky nurses station and putting the nurses down the hallway close to the patients so they can get to the patients fast. Um, it's all about patients and families. It's all about meeting their needs. And being here since 2004 has allowed us the experience to learn what we didn't know when we built, built it originally. So we're able to add to this wonderful, I mean this building, I've been in hospice a long time, and I've never seen a hospice building hold up to changes and growth like this place has. It's just incredible. Um, so thank you, Dwayne, and all of you who were involved in the beginning. Um, we haven't had a campaign here at Joliet Area Community Hospice since that original campaign. Um, and so we, we really try not to go to our major donors unless there's something really big. And this is really big for us, for our community. We, are the, um, we were the first hospice unit in the state of Illinois. And there's only 12 others in the state. And so it's um, very special that we have this space here. Um, so we, I want to talk about some contributions that we've had. Our staff, we had a campaign with the staff. You'll notice they're wearing blue shirts if you gave. I did give, I'm just not wearing my blue shirt. <laughs> just so you know. Um, and they together gave $27,500 for the campaign. We had a lot of fun actually raising the money and doing games and fun things. Um, we also would like to thank Joliet Township Government, who in 2017 gave us $100,000 for our Veterans Garden, which helped really start the silent phase of our campaign. So we've been in the silent phase for a while, where our total that we're trying to raise is three and a half million. Um, and we wanted to get a good start on that before we had this wonderful day here. So here we are. Um, we've also had three subsequent $10,000 gifts to the Veterans Memorial Garden. If you haven't seen it, on your way out, it's right outside. It's beautiful. I'm, I'm, I don't even want to like walk. <laughs> I walk around it because it's sacred space, you know, it's just, that's how I feel about it. Um, and then we've had four additional six-figure commitments, a pledge of $35,000 from the Contractors Association of Will and Grundy Counties, and numerous other gifts and pledges from our donors, from our families. Um, our biggest source of gifts is memorial gifts in honor of people who have died. So now we'd like to do a check presentation from our board. You want them to come up here, yes? Okay. Yeah, board members, come up. We need a little drum. <laughs> Where's Bill? Bill? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Short people come up front. Right? Yeah, we need to move over. Yeah. Where are the girls? <laughs> <laughs> we have females on our board. Yes. Yes. <laughs> Here we go. All right. Sorry. So I'm going to give this to you guys to hold. No, so the board has pledged. $323,224. So thank you all very much. You look good up here, guys. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you can stay up here. All right. So now we're going to close with the grand total of what we've raised. So I'm going to ask the staff to come on up. Wait, 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 wait. Everyone get in. We have to get in order. I thought you were saying one, two, go. No, 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 no. Seven. Seven. Really good care of patients, but 
<laughs> oh, we don't do this every day. We don't day. do this. Go. <laughs> okay. This is the total that we've raised to date. Hopefully, we're in the right order. Yes. <laughs> So 2.1 million has been raised out of our 3.5 million. I would also like to share that the board has committed another 3.5 million from our investment accounts and income, our rainy day fund, um, because that's how important they feel this is. So it's a $7 million campaign in all. And um, 2.1, we got it made. We just gotta get to, just gotta get to three and a half. Piece of cake, right? Right. Um, okay. Any questions? All right. Well, we encourage you to stick around, um, have some food. We'll give tours. You can look at the plans. We'll answer any questions that you have that you didn't want to ask on TV, um, which I understand. Uh, and thank you so much for being here. Thank you for your ever loving support. We couldn't do this without you, and uh, we are very grateful. Thank you.